Boxing King Media and Association with Boxer. Delighted to be joined by O'Hara Two Tanks Davis, aka The Undertaker, as well. Uh, fresh off your win, I'm not sp spoken to you since you uh, stopped Lewis Ritson. Uh, how's life been for you since that win? I've been eating, I've been drinking, I've been gone bed late, um, I've been free. You know, being in camp for all those months made me feel like I was in, made me feel like I was in, um, I was in prison. Now I've, I've got a bit of freedom. I'm out. <laughs> so yeah, I've been good. Very happy. People judge you on what you tweet and the what you've been tweeting. You're recently. coming across as somebody completely different. I think as you get older, as you learn, and you change, and also. I feel like at the start of my boxing career, I was, I feel like I was trying too hard to be someone that I'm not. I, you know, I've looked up to people like Floyd, been looking up to guys like the great Muhammad Ali, and I've tried to base my boxing career and act in a way. The champ, the champ, listen, listen Adrian, you, you see this man here, this champ, I'm telling you, I predicted listen. it. Years ago, Listen, I predicted it years ago. Me and Ango way back before anything. He, before he, anything. Must, he, he is written for O'Hara Davis. Is to he one of the most underrated fighters in British boxing? Uh, underrated to who? Not to me. Because I mean, I, just Joe Publi. I don't think so. I think everyone knows O'Hara has always had the potential and the ability to become a world champion. Me, more than most people, because I was there from the beginning of the journey. Um, I had my first fight under him. Yeah, my first fight, we, so you know, we, we, I took him to Las Vegas. Vegas. Well, he paid, he paid twice. his own ticket, but twice, <laughs> twice, sparred with Rolio Romero. What's his name? That Sean Porter. Sean uh, Porter. Uh, you know, everyone. I took them out there. And, uh, everyone. I mean, I was on the phone to Bill Haney, Devon Haney's dad, yesterday, and he's like, "Oh, D man, oh, D, oh, D's, You know what I'm saying? So we're always, we've always expected the best from Old Horror, and I think. I've heard him say on in interviews that, you know, he is grown up now, you know, he's found himself, not worrying about what people say. And I think that is the best thing about, for me, watching O'Hara from a distance, is that he's being himself. And when he's like that, as you've seen in his last fight, he's an explosive fighter and we wish him all the best. Thank you so much. Cut, kind words uh, there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a genius and I'll come see you. Some, some nice, kind words and... You know, he touched on your time in Vegas, and I know you got some crazy stories about that. But we're going to cover that another day. Um, but just regards to what you were saying, what was the key moment in your life that you thought, you know, I'm, I'm going to change, uh, fuck the older Hara Davis? You know, what, what happened? You know, I just had to look at how my boxing career has gone, and a lot of the mistakes that I made. I feel like I've been trying too hard to be someone that I'm not. Been acting out of character in order to sell fights. I had, I had boxing managers and boxing promoters that weren't genuine and they encouraged me to act in a way that um, in a way that isn't me and also I've got idols people like Floyd Ali I've been I've been trying to be someone else throughout my whole boxing career and I just sat down one day and I said you know what I'm gonna be O'Hara Davis I don't care whether that sells fights or not I'm gonna be myself and um, you know I thought that that's gonna make me less than the limelight but it's made people grow to like me a lot more and you know I've never been cheered into a fight in my whole boxing career I've been a pro almost eight nine years now and I've never been cheered into a, into a boxing ring yet and I hope that one day I can get cheered into a, a ring when I'm fighting. Well you certainly backed it up in the ring you've got a knack of going in as your way fighter in front of hostile crowds and keep getting knockout wins um, so obviously you beat Lewis Ritson, what position are you in now? Is your next fight going to be for a world title or are you going to have to have, have another fight in between? I'm mandatory now for the world title now, I'm the mandatory for the WBA but you know, um, Roley's fighting Alberto Polo for it, I think the 13th of May then that winner's got to fight Ishmael Broso, then that winner's got to fight me and I feel like, you know, if I wait it's going to be probably early next year probably and I'll probably get a warm-up fight before then, just to, just to keep me busy, um, to keep my mind in the game. And so I think I'll probably fight, let's say August times, June, July, August times, I'll probably fight again. And, and then the big question, O'Hara, I, I know you've seen recently, there seems to be being a bit of love shared between yourself and Eddie Hearn. You know, you've gone away from being thrown under the bus. You've come out under the bus, you've survived. And uh, has, has there been any contact between you and Eddie direct? Nah. You know, there's been no contact between us direct. That's a phase in my boxing career that I'd like to leave in the past. You know, um, now they've got so many boxing promoters now. They've got literally 
they got so many. So, you know, at one point it was only Eddie or Frank Warren, whereas now they got Wasserman, they got everyone now. They got Wasserman, um, you know, they got Boxer, they got other people up in America, other boxing promoters in the UK. So I've got so much option now. They got Disrupt, who I'm with. So, you know, there's so much option now. I don't need to go back to Eddie Hearn. And, you know, that's a, you know I had a good run with him. Um, and I like to keep that phase. I like to keep that in the past. How does it make you feel when Eddie came out and, uh, and said, if I don't want to directly quote him, but he, he said he's happy for you, he's happy that, you know, you, you, you made something of your career and you didn't give up and you got yourself in a brilliant position now? If he's really happy for me, he wouldn't have thrown me under the bus. You know, they knew that I was innocent all those years ago. <laughs> Listen, he knew that I was innocent all those, um, all those years ago. Eddie phoned me in private and said, I believe you. Then they go online. O'Hara's been taken off the show because he said something wrong. He knew that I was innocent, so he ain't happy for me. But, you know, if he wants to say that, he can say what he wants to say. Um, yeah, but, you know, it is what it is. Good stuff, O'Hara. Anything else you want to say before I let you go? Uh, nah, all good. I appreciate your time, man. Thank you.